Is your cloud migration project about to kick off or has it begun? Here are some key lessons learned from my over 15 years of experience running cloud migration projects. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider. This channel explores the ins and outs of cloud computing without an agenda or following into the narrative set by big tech marketing. You look at what works and what does not and the actual value of this technology in a balanced and information forward way. If that interests you, please subscribe, like, and comment. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, cloud and AI architect, top 10 cloud and AI influencer, B-list geek, and over the hill mountain biker. Let's get started. So, the idea for this show kind of came from the fact that everybody is doing migrations and some people are migrating to the cloud and some people are migrating off the cloud with repatriation, which is a which is a thing these days. But we're no matter where you're going, you're taking your applications from on prem to the cloud or from the cloud to on prem. There are certain challenges in how you do migrations and how you do the planning and how you do the architecture and how you manage the process. And so I've been doing these projects for 15 years. So I figure I'd just share to you, you know, share with you what experiences that I've run into. So at the core of this, many organizations underestimate the complexity of migrating legacy systems leading to unexpected downtime and cost overruns. You know, it's critical to identify and address technical debt before migrating to avoid these common setbacks. And so what I'm hearing when people dive into a cloud migration project, and certainly without a lot of planning, without a lot of architecture, in other words, just trying to set up a migration factory and move applications uh, from one platform to the other as quickly as they can, that they're often met with obstacles that they didn't expect. Uh, complexity, data coupling, security issues, compliance issues, performance issues, things like that. And this is really going to be a game where your planning is going to reap a lot of benefits. And so, you know, keep in mind that people have a tendency, and certainly the vendors have a tendency to oversimplify this process. And it's a very complex process, and you can make a lot of mistakes. And so what we're going to do is go over, you know, what uh, common mistakes are made and how to avoid them and some tricks and hacks in terms of uh, providing you with a better migration outcome. So first thing, choose the right migration strategy. Options like rehosting, refactoring, replatforming each have unique trade-offs for cost, speed, and long-term agility. Carefully assess application needs to help ensure the chosen approach aligns with the business goals. Can't stress this enough. The reason that many people are repatriating their applications, in other words, they moved them to the cloud and now they're pushing them back on-prem, is because there wasn't a lot of planning that's done, a lot of assessment as to what those applications are, and more importantly, what needs to happen to them when they get to the uh, target platform. In many cases, applications that were migrated into the cloud should have been refactored. In other words, they're redeveloped and recoded, uh, and sometimes the data is restructured to accommodate the benefits that cloud computing can bring. And so in other words, cloud computing is good at you know, scaling up and scaling down, but you have to code the applications in many cases to take advantage of that. And so that's why these folks, when they just migrated these applications into the cloud without a lot of forethought in terms of how they're going to run there, uh, ended up taking way too many resources. They had performance issues, security issues, things like that, because they didn't consider the approach or the strategy in terms of that particular application, what did it, what it, what it needed to operate effectively on the target platform, in this case, the cloud, or it could be back on-prem. So next, consider data migration challenges. Moving large volumes of data to the cloud can introduce issues with latency, you know, integrity and compliance tools, and phased approach can help minimize disruption during transfer. So this is basically doing the same thing we just talked about doing with the application with the data. In other words, if we're going to move it into the cloud environment, you know, the migration is going to occur. How is it going to happen? Does it need to be restructured? How do we deal with compliance and security on this new environment? And then putting a plan in place to carry that out. Many data migrations are going to be straightforward. In other words, they're just moving data from A to A, from a, uh, from a platform and then to an analog of that platform in the cloud. Databases, for example, you can certainly find you know, MySQL databases on-prem and you're just find an analog, in this case, MySQL in the cloud or some kind of a compatible database. However, 
many cases, it's not that simple. You have to figure out how the data is going to have to be changed and restructured to accommodate some of the capabilities of the cloud environment, also align with the data. In other words, if the data is coupled to the applications, in many cases they are, you can't just refactor the application and not change the data. There has to be some consideration of the impact of the data as you move to the cloud environment. So next, security and compliance considerations. Cloud migration presents new security challenges around data privacy, access control, and regulatory requirements. So embedding security best practices from the outset is essential to protect sensitive assets. I won't do a migration unless there's a security plan. There has to be an overall security and compliance strategy as well as governance as well that is dealing with the applications that we're moving to the cloud holistically, but also particular mini plans as we're dealing with a particular application and data set that's migrating to the cloud. You know, what are we doing? What's in that data? How does it need to be protected? All that stuff should be considered up front. That should not be something that we wire in after the migrations occurred. So in other words, many companies will push applications and data sets into the cloud, and then suddenly they'll start figuring out security governance uh, and compliance, that's not the time to do it. You need to do it ahead of time. You need to do it as part of the planning or else you're just going to end up migrating twice. You're going to end up putting on the cloud and then migrating it to a secure environment once it's on the cloud. Save yourself some steps and save yourselves a lot of frustrations and also save yourself a lot of money by putting the planning needed and leveraging the best practices. So when you move these data sets and applications to the cloud, they're going to be the most secure, the most compliant, you know, and the most uh, optimized for security as they can be. Next would be managing downtime and business continuity. Planning for minimal disruption is critical to maintain business operations during migration strategies like phase cutovers, parallel runs, and robust rollback plans can help ensure continuity. So keep in mind is when we know this from any migration project that we've ever worked on, we're moving it from one platform, which is, I guess, the legacy platform in this case, to a new platform, which is many cases is going to be the cloud. And we have to figure out how we're going to do that. When is the cutover going to occur? How are we going to migrate the data? You know, how are we going to make sure we don't miss a beat in terms of supporting the users? And there's lots of ways you can do this phased approaches where we, you know, migrate. We have, uh, you know, two versions of the applications, the database that are running at the same time when we're phasing user groups over. We're doing a complete cutover, but we also have contingency plans. In other words, if something goes wrong, in other words, the application, I, this happens a ton, by the way. Uh, doesn't run as anticipated, instead of damaging the business, we can fall back to the uh, you know legacy uh, version of it. Um, many cases I've seen organizations that are trying to move very quickly onto the cloud, and so they'll migrate the data and migrate the applications, they'll do minimal amount of testing, and when they roll it out, they have some sort of scalability issue and some sort of usability issue that they didn't anticipate. And sometimes they've cut the legacy systems off. So in other words, they've already dismantled it within the data center and there's no place for those users to go. And so they have to run on the dysfunctional cloud system or in many cases they are going to be down for a couple of days before you fix the issues. You don't want to be that person. So think about the cutover because it's a very difficult thing to do. It's not a lot of fun, but you have to put the planning in place to make sure that we do that cutover right. Next, consider cost management during migration. Migration projects often encounter hidden costs in areas such as licensing, egress fees, and temporary dual running environments. Uh, so ongoing monitoring and optimization are required to keep budgets on track. Uh, in many cases, we see people who are paying software licenses uh, for their on-prem environments. They'll move them into the cloud, and they can have a bring-your-own license you know, type of a deal there where you just you know, push, pull the license from one database or one application infrastructure into the cloud, and most software companies allow that. But they don't consider the cost of doing that, how you can optimize the cost of making those changes. And I think that we're going to be missing some opportunities to save some money if we don't do that. In fact, you know, I had a client one time, you know, forget to cancel the license on the on-prem system, assume it was going to be done automatically. And they ran up a million dollar bill <laughs> over a year's time because they were in essence running a license in two different areas. And the software company hit them up for it. They were able to negotiate it uh, and, and get a reasonable outcome for that. But try not to make those mistakes. Uh, I think they're easy to make um, because they're just, not, they're just about not paying attention. But there really should be a plan in terms of how we're going to manage costs, licensing costs, migration costs. All that stuff should be known. 
So next, staff training and change management. Successful migrations depend on whether teams are ready to operate and manage cloud-based systems. Comprehensive training is clear communications, and clear communications can ease the transition and foster adoption. So the cultural changes and the training changes, the skills, uh, the, the new skills that are there, uh, need to be built into the people who are going to be surrounding the cloud. You can't just push people into the cloud and expect them to, you know, shift their operational focus and shift their, uh, you know, DBA focus and shift their performance engineering focus and infrastructure engineering focus without a lot of training to tell them what the new environment's going to do and how they're going to manage it. And also cultural changes as well. There has to be some sort of a change agent uh, there to promote the fact that we're going to move to in this to this new environment. And obviously we've been doing my cloud migrations for a long period of time, but it, it's jarring for many organizations to suddenly move from a data center that they may have connected to the building, uh, it happens many times, uh, into a cloud environment that they can't see. So everything's going to be virtual. And so your ability to change the culture, your ability to augment the skill sets is going to be on the critical path to making it successful. So next, post-migration optimization. The work doesn't end at cutover. Continuous tuning of performance costs and governments is, in governance is vital to post-migration. Take advantage of cloud-native capabilities that can unlock further business value. So... <clears throat> We always have to be thinking about how these things are going to perform and the ability to tune performance as we go. You're going to find that if you move systems and applications and data sets into the cloud without reformatting, without tuning, they're not going to run very, very uh, well. And they're also going to cost you a lot of money because they're taking too many resources. We should be continuously improving performance and optimization of these systems. And that should be built into the core processes. So next, measuring migration success. Clear metrics such as application performance, cost reduction, and user satisfaction are necessary to gauge the effectiveness of the migration. Regular reviews help refine processes and ensure sustained benefits. So I can't stress this enough. What does success look like? We need to ask that at the beginning of the migration process. If we move these, you know, sometimes thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of applications into the cloud, how are we going to measure success of that? Is it going to be cost reduction? Is it going to be performance enhancements? Is it going to be, you know, value from elasticity, the ability to, um, you know, suffer to, to uh, operate better through the business spikes? In other words, business increases and the cloud's able to scale up. Something that tells us how we're going to measure not just the cost advantages, but the value that it's able to bring back to the business so we can show our peers in the organization and show our leadership that we've thought through this and that we figured out how the value is going to be created and we've actually moved to that objective. So what are some of the lessons I've learned from failures? Uh, even unsuccessful migrations provide valuable insights into what to avoid in future projects. Sharing and analyzing these stories can inform better planning and risk management. I find people who botch migrations have a tendency to keep it to themselves and, you know, probably for career reasons, even within the company. Uh, you know, in other words, you hear of something that was, we're going to migrate to the cloud in 12 months, and then suddenly 18 months later, two years later, they're still not there. Well, what happened? Well, chances are they didn't consider many of the things we just talked about, the ability to have planning and foresight and metrics and realistic expectations in terms of you know, what we're able to get into the cloud and what duration of time and how success is going to be measured. And so no harm in failing. And obviously, you know, in the technology world, we kind of should have a fail fast culture, but many people protect themselves. They don't talk about it. They don't share reasons that they failed. And so other people in the same organization end up failing doing the same thing. And so share your insights. And if you do fail, something doesn't work out as well as it, well as it uh, should have. Um, what happened and how you can avoid it in the future. And your ability to kind of own those failures is going to go directly to you being a successful, you know, uh, cloud architect, but someone who's managing these migration projects because they're all going to be different. They're all going to be, it depends. Uh, they're all going to have different uh, environments and challenges that are unique to those, those migration domains. And we need to figure out if something went wrong, why it went wrong and how we can avoid it. So to summarize, do listen to people who have already gone through it and pay attention to what worked and what did not work for them. Understand that their platforms and problems will be different from one problem domain to the other, as we just discussed. 
do gather as much information as you can about what you're doing specifically and the skills you'll likely need to succeed. Often migration projects go off the rails when there are not enough people around who know what they are doing. So in other words, the skill sets or lack of skill sets can really kill you with a migration project if we don't consider them and make them a priority. Don't listen to what the cloud providers are telling you as advice. Often they are promoting quick migration to their cloud to promote revenue. However, that is frequently not in your best interest, including considering refactoring of applications and data uh, that may slow you down, uh, but benefit you specifically. You can get their opinion on issues, but understand that they're conflicted. So in other words, when you're talking to AWS, Microsoft, Google, you know, the different cloud providers out there, you know, you're dealing with solutions engineer, they're not disinterested third parties. They're trying to sell you cloud, whether it's the solutions architect or the salesperson that's there. And so in many cases, I think we made massive migrations into the cloud without thinking through a lot of the stuff that we just talked about because the vendors are there with uh, with pom poms, you know, cheering the fact they're trying to move applications and data as quickly into the cloud. And so they promoted no refactoring, just move it into the cloud and figure it out when you get there. And that's how many of these mistakes were made. Uh, and in many cases, they even funded the migration. They would give the consulting companies, you know, a certain budget to, you know, could millions of dollars in many cases to fund these migrations as quickly as they can because they knew the downstream revenue, reoccurring revenue was going to be there. And so that drove a lot of mistakes because people thought they were getting objective advice from the advice from the cloud providers or even the consultants that were selling the cloud. In this case, that were funding the migration when that wasn't the case. So many cases, mistakes were made because enterprises were listening to the wrong people. And finally, along the lines of the consulting thing, don't use consulting firms that are in partnership with cloud providers as they may become a sales channel for a specific provider or most of them. So understand that the revenue could be based on promoting one cloud provider over another, and that could lead to making wrong decisions. We said this a lot on this channel, I'll say it again. Now, of course, pretty much every the, all the major cloud providers out there are partners with the big cloud providers. So what do you do? Well, get them to disclose the relationship uh, up front. So if you're engaging with them, that should be part of the agreement. You have to disclose any kind of monetary benefits, even secondary benefits that you're going to get from relationship with, with cloud providers. And also be very suspicious if they come up with an AWS only, uh, you know, architecture, um, that's going to be a little bit off because it's obviously not always going to be a single cloud provider. It's going to be multiple cloud providers that are, you know, providing best of breed infrastructure for the environments. And so I'm not opposed to using consultants that have relationships and partnerships with, with um, cloud pro providers as long as they disclose what those relationships are driving and they're honest about it. And many of them are making money, secondary revenue, from partnerships with the big cloud providers because obviously they're funding some of the migrations because it benefits the cloud providers and that funding is going directly to the consultants. And so the consultants are no longer unbiased. Uh, and they're not objective about what technologies to use. And if that's the case, that should be disclosed to you. And you should consider that in the answers that you're getting from them. Well, I hope you got something out of that. Um, and let me know about your own cloud migrations, failures and success and experiences in the comments. So don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos on this channel. Also check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, and of course my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. My other YouTube show, AI Insights Innovation on the Cube Research YouTube channel. And finally, my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next time, you guys stay very, very safe. Later.